Welcome, and from me is a Samsung Galaxy A10, and today I will show you a couple of tweaks and tricks that I can do on this device. So we're gonna begin with the uh, night mode. So it will basically turn everything into dark. So all the white that you see here will be basically darker. So it's gonna be just easier to use at night. And some people just prefer that kind of look. So to enable this, you would go into the settings and then into the display. And you have night mode right here. It's basically a dark mode in other words. So. That's basically how you enable it. As you can see now, whatever you pull down, uh, most of the things is in a black color. Um, just looks a little bit cleaner. Uh, now I'm gonna go back to actually white because I think it's just easier to see on a camera. Um, just turn it back off. Okay, just keep it like so. Now another thing that I'm gonna show is one of the ones that I really like. It's a quick open notification panel. So if you're using this uh, the phone one-handed, as I believe most people are primarily trying to do, uh, then you'll see that when you pull down, you get the up drawer. If you pull up, you get the same thing. Now there is, in my opinion, no reason for it to have the two same things depending on where you swipe. Uh, and there's actually a way for you to pull down basically from here or wherever, wherever you have the space to pull down. Instead of getting to the app drawer, you can pull down the notification panel. So to enable this, we would go into the settings again. And then we're gonna go into the display again. Scroll down, wherever that is. Um, home screen right here. And then quick open notification panel right here. And now if I go back and pull down basically from just the bottom, you can see that it automatically opens the notification panel. And you can still swipe up to get to the app drawer. So fairly nice thing, um, fairly user-friendly, I would say, and helps with accessing just the top of the phone uh, in a different and easier way. Now moving on, uh, I'm gonna go into another one that I feel it's fairly essential, um, but it's more in a a way to protect your, uh, for instance, passwords. So if I go right now to Wi-Fi, uh, just as an example, and it's the easiest way for me to get the password the quickest. So whenever you type in a password and you start tapping it away, you can always see the latest letter you have pressed. So if someone is really content, they can peek over your shoulder and gather your entire password being neatly provided in sequence. In my opinion, a little bit annoying but there is actually a way in the settings to disable that so it becomes immediately a dot like every other letter and that password is. So you would go again into the settings and then security um, or biometrics and security right here. And then let's go other security settings and make password visible and disable that sucker. So people can't see your password. And now as an example, if I go back here, you can type in a password, you can see that there is no letter visible. And something even is better because it doesn't show up the letter above whenever you press it. So it's way harder for people to gather your password just by looking at it. Okay, so Moving on, we're gonna go into uh, pinning windows, which is another security kind of thing, but more for I uh, use that when you're trying to show someone your device, but you don't really wanna uh, want them to access different parts of the phone. So you can pin a window so they can't actually leave that window without uh, basically knowing the correct combination of keys to unpin it. And if you have password or some kind of pattern uh, set, and they will also have to confirm it. Now, if the device has no pattern or password, then they only need to know the, the way of to how to disable it. And I believe it's gonna be back and recent, but I'm not exactly sure. We'll see once I enable this. But yeah, to enable this, we're gonna go again back into the settings and the same place where we were enabling passwords. So biometrics and security and other security settings. <coughs> 
and we should have on the bottom I believe it was pin window right here enable that you can tap on it and right here you will see pin and up the screen prevents others from accessing uh, further outside of the pinned up and uh, turn pinning windows open um, so uh, so yeah you have uh, use screen lock uh, type to unpin you can check that on probably better to check it on but now if I would actually want to pin something so let me just open up well, I guess whatever doesn't really matter if I go into recent and tap on the phone itself I'll have pin this up option now once I tap on it so yeah I was correct recent and back um, it basically pops up the first time uh, with this message how to unpin it you just tap on ok and I don't think it's gonna pop up anymore so now if I try to leave it go back I uh, go to recent it's telling me that the app is pinned and I have to unpin it and you would basically hold both of those keys to unpin it you can see up unpinned and now I can actually leave it but like I said if you have some kind of pattern it will work even better because then you'll have to also confirm it with a passcode to unpin it now moving on we're gonna go into app shortcuts and this is a fairly simple one it will just allow you to switch the apps that you have right on here so you have the phone and camera by default and you can switch it up to have basically different apps you can set it up to whatever app you have installed on your device and to change it you will go again into the uh, settings and from here to lock screen so right here and up shortcuts and you have these two left and right so tap on each one if you want to change both of them it gives you a list of apps that you have on your device and from here you can change it to whatever else you like so for instance I could choose music and now if I lock the device and unlock it I'll have instead of a phone music and I can launch music quickly by just swiping and unlocking the device like so um, skip so you can see that it works fairly well and it's just a way for you to I guess have access to apps that you might be using fairly often just a quicker way of accessing them okay so moving on we're gonna go into the gestures and what this will allow you is just simply removes the buttons that you have right here and uh, switches them to well pseudo gestures they're not really full gestures like other devices have uh, they still have in a way buttons located on the same place uh, and just instead of like topping them you have these little bars underneath and the simple way to enable it you just go into the notification panel slide over and you have right here navigation bar touch that and they disappear you get a little bit more space on the desk or on the display and now you can see that you have these like faint looking three bars and each one of them corresponds to the button that was previously above it and instead of touching on it you're just gonna swipe up like so so you can see that middle one is still uh, the home button this is still back and this is still recent so they act the same way that's why I'm saying it's pseudo gestures because normally uh, you have a little bit of better use of the gesture system than this has implemented but it's still nice if you want to keep your uh, screen a little bit more clean and remove unnecessary things like the navigation bars okay, let me actually just enable it back considering on the tray it's easier for me to press than swipe so moving on we're gonna go into the uh, one that might not cater to everybody but it's the uh, game launcher and uh, in a simple way it, all it does is um, basically prioritize games uh, for you to uh, for them to run better but it also allows you to hide games so if you have since if I go into app drawer um, and you, let's just assume I have some games here that will be cluttering the app drawer uh, when you open up the uh, the game launcher which uh, we first have to actually enable it at least on this device normally they come already enabled and there is an app but apparently not on the A10 so to enable it we're gonna go into settings and then let's go into advanced features so right here and find game launcher 
like so. Tap on add, let's go back. And there it is. So it creates this shortcut. And when you launch it for the first time, uh, let's just agree, it will give you an option to hide apps. So there we go, or hide games more specifically. And if you select this, uh, it will allow you to basically whatever games you would have here, they'll be removed from this page and they will only be accessible to the game launcher. And from here, you also have a couple additional things that you can do. You can number one, uh, mute notifications and furthermore, customize how it's being muted and also prioritize uh, gaming or, perfor or performance in this case. So you have a slider, focus on power saving, balance or focus on performance. So you can slide which to whichever side you want and uh, then whenever you launch a game from here, it will be affected by whatever you have set right here. So it's a nice way for you to have a little bit more of an immersive session with just this app. Now moving on, we're gonna go into the animations. And I believe uh, that Samsung has some kind of animation reduction, uh, animation reduce or something like that option. Uh, but that, that, that setting is completely worthless in my opinion. And there is a far better one that has always been on Android. So let's go into the settings and to about phone. Let's go down to, to right here. Nope. Um, software information, I think it's gonna be. And yeah, there it is, build number. So once more, uh, it's gonna be in software information and build number, tap that seven times. You'll get a message, you are now a developer. When you go back once more, I think, there we go. I have a new option called developer options. And if I go into it, just scroll a little bit past halfway. And you have these three options right here. So window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animation duration scale. And probably the best overall setting would be just to set it to half speed. A default is one, that's how it's normally on every phone. So you can set it to half. And now all the animations throughout the entire system will be basically half speed. So they will be twice as fast as they were previously. And if you want to go an extra step, you can always just completely turn them off and then apps will uh, apps and windows, all the animations will just, well, not have animations, so everything will be instant. There's no more zooming in. It also will allow you to access uh, certain apps and, uh, or not certain, basically all the apps uh, quicker because the phone doesn't need to animate the process of you like opening it up. It just pops in and out. So, uh, but like I said, it, it's more of a preference. If you like to have animations, like I said, half speed is probably the best overall option because it's the best of both, both worlds. Now, moving on, we're gonna go into another option. Uh, this one is more for multitasking, which is a split screen. And uh, the best use for it, in my opinion, at least uh, from, let's say, like when you're commuting somewhere, um, and you're trying to use internet while listening to YouTube, uh, that's the best way to use it in my opinion, but you can also use it in different ways, whatever suits you. Uh, I find it, at least in my personal use, to be the best way. So I'm just gonna launch YouTube here. Now probably would matter if I have internet so I can show you exactly how this works. Okay, there we go. Let it just connect and I'm gonna turn down the music so there is no copyright strike. Let me just maybe relaunch this. For some reason it doesn't want to load. There we go, it's not loaded. So from here, once you have a YouTube open, you can tap on the recent button and it opens up, well, at this, at this moment, only one recent app, but you tap on it again. And here we have the option open in a split screen view. You tap on it, it moves it up and then it opens up home screen or sometimes it opens up the recent apps, depending if you have some recent apps open. 
but you can always tap on the home button and then choose your app from the app drawer like you would normally do. And then I'm just gonna open up Chrome as an example. Just tap on accept and from here you can launch whatever. Uh, so majestically I managed to open up a ad. So let's skip it. And you can see that the video is playing. So in normal circumstances, if you would be listening to uh, music, this would be continuing to play. Well, I can continue to do something else on here. So I can go to Wikipedia or whatever uh, and continue to use and read while music would be playing above. And as you all know, whenever you're listening to music on YouTube and you just switch to other app, the music gets paused. So it's a nice way of listening to music while doing other things. And once you want to close it, you can either drag it into full view and close it or just close it and then you have the little circular X where you just tap on it and it disappears. And then the last thing that I wanted to show is the double press power button for camera. Now this is just a simple one that allows you to access camera really quickly. And in a way of like emergency if you want to uh, capture something really quick and time is more sensitive I guess so you just double press the power uh, power key and uh, and it opens up camera and this function works uh, either when the device is locked like you just seen so tomorrow I'm gonna lock it just to show it it automatically opens or even when the device is unlocked can also press it and it opens it up automatically. So just a handy way of launching camera really quickly. But yeah, that would conclude the tweaks and tricks that I wanted to share. And if you found any of them helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.